consequence for our evil. If you are a murderer, where are you going to be? What's the consequence of being a murderer? What about a thief? Jail, right? Sometimes if it's not jail, what is it? Six feet under, in the grave, right? Do y'all want to die? So the opposite of not breaking God's commandments is you keeping his commandments. So everybody want to live, right? Here we go. Cause I got sand in my boots and dust in my eyes, but it's okay. As long as they got fear in their eyes and hurt in their soul, then it's okay. And it's okay. Yeah. South Carolina. What? As long as I got sand in my boots and dust in my eyes, and I'm okay. So what color again? So why do they lie to us with this? You see what I'm saying? Cause whoever controlled the slaves, mind controlled the slaves. So they put this in your mind, so now you don't have no self love for yourself no more. Okay. I'm sick of this, okay. the Jews and wickedness the They riding their bikes, not riding with guys yeah. I'm tired of this wish, yeah. okay It's not the best I'm sorry. Jazeera, brother, what's that? Hey, brother, brother, real quick. Truman, 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 brother, Truman, Truman. Truman, come over here real quick. Come over here. We're going we to be able to deal with you. Brother Anthony, right? Jazeera, okay, look. Here go the thing. We're trying to warn our people on how to save their souls before destruction comes. You understand that, right? Because give me Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15. A lot of people like to think because of this lion image right here, based behind Christianity, we was taught this image that Jesus is going to come. When he comes on the earth, he's going to be giving hugs, candy, and kisses on the cloud and everything like that. That's neither the case. You understand that? When you read the Bible for yourself, God says he's coming back to bring forth destruction on the planet. We call it the day of doom, right? The day of judgment, all right? So, my question for you all, what are we going to do? What are we, as a people, going to do to save our souls? Let's see what the Bible says. Come on. Isaiah 66, verse 15. For behold. The Lord will come with fire. The Bible says God will come how? With fire. With fire. All right, you understand, Reed? Come on. And with his chariot, like a whirlwind. But Jesus Christ is not going to come looking like this when he comes. Jesus Christ, when he returns, will come like a black man like you and I. You understand that, right? The true Christ is going to come looking like his people that he came to save. All right, Brother Edward? So, my question, what are you going to do to save your soul? That's what we got to ask ourselves. How do you receive salvation? Keep the commandments, right? Very good. Come on, keep reading. Actually, from that, give me Peter's now. Here we go. Very good answer. He go to uh, clarity on it. Come on. First Peter, chapter 4, verse 15. Listen up, Brother Truman. Come on. Because listen, he talked earlier, right? A part of our culture, our commandments, you all have to marry according to the Bible. But not only that, let me ask you, do you have children? I got kids. Do you have daughters? Or what? Do you want a daughter? One day? A son, right? Imagine this, right? Imagine you walking down the street on a Saturday afternoon at Bike Week in, um, um, in uh, where we at right now? Uh, Murder Beach, right? And you have a daughter, right? And she's out walking with her friends in a bikini. A lot of times bikinis, they don't reveal, they don't, they don't cover up a lot of what's clothing, right? Now you don't have a daughter, but you have a wife, right? Let's see what the Bible says. Rick. Give me what you, what you got for me. Titus, ch Titus chapter 2. I'm, a, I'm, a sh I'm showing you something, right? Because as the brother stated earlier, you are the protector of your household. Right. Right. The house begins with the man and the woman agreeing together. You have to protect the body of your wife. Her nakedness is your, you understand that? You're supposed to cover her nakedness. So when you promote your woman out here, you got all the brothers out here looking at your flesh. Right. Looking at your rib, you understand that? Right. Hey, listen, listen. You may think, okay, it's good. I'm mad enough to take it, but what do you do for your brothers? They lust. You understand that? What is the, the point is, our repentance is our obedience towards God That's right, to receive bro. salvation. So it's not just you running your house, it's for you to obey the commandment as well. Give me modest apparel. As the woman being behavior as becoming godliness. Let me ask your abuela, right? Right? Something like that, right? She wouldn't be out here in a bikini or nothing, right? 
She set the standard on how a woman is supposed to dress and everything. No. It's only in America where promiscuity is held at a great esteem. You understand? It's the illusion of sin is good and good is evil. We telling you something good. Ain't nothing wrong with me instructing you as a man to tell your wife, cover her body. And you as a man, put on the shirt. You understand that? You not even walk your modesty. You get what I'm saying? God don't want you walking around like that. Give me up. You got what I want? Come on, read. First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Don't get offended at God or Christ. Even to the point of how we dress. God cares about you. Right. Even to the point of how you, what you eat, how you, put, you see these tattoos? I wasn't supposed to get this. In my ignorance, I got it. Even to the point we're not supposed to tattoo our flesh. You understand that? How we treat each other. God cares about how we treat each other. He gave us commandments to do so. Read on, come on. With same faces. And so quiet. Read it again on the top, come on. And like men also, uh -huh. that women adorn themselves. And modest apparel. What did Christ say? That women adorn themselves in modest apparel. That a woman is supposed to adorn themselves. How modest? What is modesty? Cleavage not out. Ass not showing. Right. What does that do? That promotes whoredom in the land. Let's right. get to the law. Leviticus chapter 19. Because look, look, check this out. I know you're checking for your, for your fiance, right? But it's how we set the standard in our households, right? Leviticus chapter 19, verse 27. Listen, remember I mentioned about a daughter, right? Read, come on. Leviticus. Verse 29, come on. Leviticus 19 and 29. Read. Do not prostitute thy daughter. Don't do what? Do not prostitute thy daughter. Nowadays, you can't tell the difference between a good woman, right, that got morals, and a prostitute. Right. How is that? Right. Because the prostitutes and the good women look like hoes. Right. Bring it out. What does the word of God do? Bring it it changes the mindset of the woman that is a good woman inwardly for her to be outwardly. She gotta dress modestly, understand right. that? You don't know the difference between a hoe and a good wife. Right. And then they say, don't judge me. You shouldn't be looking anyway. Well, how is that? What did the Bible say? This is why you're not supposed to promote. Prostitute means you're promoting a woman and a sexual indentation. You understand that, right? Our commandment is not to do that. So how much more for your better half, as they say today? You understand what I'm saying? For your rib, as the Bible calls it. Bring on, come on, let's get it. To cause her. No, from the top, come on. Do not prostitute thy daughter. Your daughters ain't supposed to look like prostitutes, my people. God cares about you so much on how you dress. The women ain't supposed to be in a promiscuous spirit, uh, uh, promiscuous uh, spirit of sex. Come on, read it from the top. Come on. Do not prostitute thy daughter right. to cause her to be a whore. So what does prostitution do? It causes her what? To be a whore. We're not supposed to have whoredom in the land. The first sign of a whore or prostitution is how a woman looks. Right. You can't tell the difference walking up the street because they look the same. Bring it out. Let's get it real quick. Oh, actually, from that. Let's get to repentance. Because look, the Lord demands obedience from all of us. At one point, we was on the other side too. I love going to the beach, shirt off, with my, with my girl, with her behind out, press showing and everything. But I had to learn what God commanded of us. First Peter 4, 4, verse 15. Come on. What you got, my bad brother? What you got? You can't be nigga while Adam Eve was nigga. They weren't. That's the thing about it. This wasn't nakedness, man. Give me Exodus real quick. They were in sin. Hey, that's a good question. Adam and Eve wasn't uh, butt naked angels coming down in the Garden of Eden. You understand that? That's not what was going on. That, huh? This is what the word nakedness means. We're going to clear it up. Very good question. The brother asked, Adam and Eve was naked, so it must be okay. Let's get the definition of what nakedness is. Exodus chapter 30, uh, 28, what is it, verse 32, brothers? 32, 28, nakedness. Exodus 32, 28, come on, let's get it. 25, thank you. Come on, let's get it, read. Exodus chapter 32 and verse 25. And when Moses saw that the people were... The people that Moses would govern over, right, Anthony, sis? Right, brother? The people that uh, Moses was the leader over were the people of Israel. When he went into the mount for 40 days and 40 nights to get the commandments of God from the Most High God in the cloud, he came down and he was like, yo, what's going on? They made two calves. Y'all remember that in the history? He made two calves and they started worshiping him, right? Here we go. Read, come on. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, they were what? Naked. They were what? Naked. To how? 
or Aaron had made them make it until they're saved. Because they made idols. They sinned by making idols of idolatry. Hold on real quick, Anthony. I'm going to show you. Because the nakedness, you're not supposed to be naked. The nakedness is talking about is the shame of sin. Give me uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14. The beginning of what Adam and Eve did in the beginning, they worshiped other gods. When Eve said to her husband, uh, when the serpent said to Eve, ye shall not surely die, Eve was empowered to be equal to the man. Right. You understand that, right? So she was naked unto her sin, thinking that she's equal to the man. Y'all read it earlier. Who's your head? Christ, who's your head? In the beginning, Adam and Eve, they had it twisted. They listened to Satan. So how they were in sin is this. Uh, 14, read, uh, let me see right here. Verse 27, come on. With the Solomon, 14 and 27. Oh. But the worshiping of idols, not to be named. The idolatry. What are some of the idols you worship today? A lot of people love to worship the Christmas tree. Yes, Very good. Easter bunny. Easter bunny. Yes, Football. Yes, Cars. To call yourself a fan, it's a root word for fanatic. Right. Or a worshiper of that team. Right. You understand that, right? We worship other gods today. My brothers, you are the sons. We are the sons of the living God. Right. God looks just like us. That's My brother right. Anthony, in the beginning, we were told to not worship idolatry or other idols. You understand that? So in the beginning, they weren't naked like clothing. They were naked unto their sin. That's you understand, right. right? Here we go. Read on. Come on. Verse 27. For the worshiping of idols, not to be named, it's the beginning. The cause and the end. Okay. Hey, my brother Anthony. My brother Anthony. Remember, the Bible says, "For our household, modest apparel, set your house in order." All right. Bro, it's hard to serve them, man. They don't kill Jesus. What you mean? Did, did all the Jews kill Jesus? Or just them that didn't believe? A lot of them believe. Give me that in Exodus. Good question. Good statement. Here we go. Give me uh uh not Exodus. Excuse me. Acts chapter 1. Hey, my brothers, how y'all doing, man? What we're doing is, if you see yourself on this sign, we are teaching to our brothers, our sisters of our nation, the children of Israel. We make up the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Hey, my brothers, listen. Y'all are in this book. Y'all understand that, right? Our history will take us back to this right here. Who did this, who did this happen to? Look at this sign real quick. Who did it happen to? Right there. Who did it happen to? What do you see on this sign? Because if you ask me, I see my brother, my uncle, my granddaddy, my father, that what had chains on his necks. How do we get to this position in our history and where we at right now? How do we get over here? What do they call us as a name? They call us what? African American, right? How do we get that name of African American? And what does it mean? What does it mean? Y'all can talk to me. This is, this is a safe place, brothers. I'm going to clear it up for you. Here we go. Deuteronomy 28. Let me get verse 15 real quick. We're going to take it slow. God never called us American blacks. God never called us Haitians or West Indians. God never called us Puerto Ricans. When you look, I'm going to assume, y'all are so-called African-American men, right? Guess what? God never called you an African-American or a Black American. You were of the tribe of Judah. Right. Guess who else was of the tribe of Judah? Because what I'm talking about, I'm not talking about the name that the white man put upon us, right? I'm talking about the name that God deemed you as in his eyesight. So, how did you get your last name? How do we get to be called African American? I'm going to show you. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Yeah. But it shall come to pass uh -huh. if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Hey, brothers, God said if you don't hearken to him, if you don't listen, another form of not listening to God is when we sin. What's some of the sins that we commit amongst our people today, amongst our own blood today? What do we do to each other? We, we, what? Man, come on up closer real quick, my brother. What's your name, my friend? What's your name, bro? Huh? Amun. All right. Hey, bro. You said we what? We kill each other. That's one of God's commandments. Lo and behold, give me Isaiah real quick. Chapter 52 real quick. 51. I'm going to show you something. Where do we kill each other at? On the streets. 
Let me show you God prophesied of the spirit of his men today. Read, come on. Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 51 verse 20. 51 and verse 20. Read, come on. Thy sons have fainted. What? Thy sons have fainted. You are the sons of Zion, the sons of the living God. You understand that? God said his sons have fainted. Why? Because we began to sin. Read, come on. They lie at the head of all the streets. We lie at the head of all the streets. We on the street corners, read. As a wild bull. As a wild bull. Brother Armand, what do we do? It says a wild bull is set to kill. On the street corners, God said, read it from the top. Come on, I'm trying to make this connection with you. Read. Thy sons have fainted. God's sons have fainted. Read. They lie at the head of all the streets as a wild bull. Hey, what are some of the times we call our other brothers that look just like us? What's the word we call them? <laughs> Niggas, yeah. We call them, what do we call them? Ops. Are we saying that the ops is the Chinese man? Are the ops the Arab man? We call ops of our own brothers. That's a, that's a, that's a hiccup amongst our nation. On the street of every corner, come on, read. They are full of the fury of the Lord. We full of the fear of the Lord, which is his anger, his indignation. You understand that? Go back to Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. So now, remember, you said, Brother Armand, real quick, you said that we kill each other, right? We break one of God's commandments. We don't listen. Read, come on. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses. Hey, if we don't do God's commandments, what's going to happen to us? All these curses. My brother, is a curse a good or bad thing? It's a bad thing, right? So, remember, there's a consequence for our evil. If you are a murderer, where are you going to be? What's the consequence of being a murderer? What about a thief? Jail, right? Sometimes if it's not jail, what is it? Six feet under, in the grave, right? Do y'all want to die? So the opposite of not breaking God's commandments is you keeping his commandments. So everybody want to live, right? Here we go, read this, come on. That all these curses will come upon us as a people. Now, real quick, give me verse 48 real quick. Brothers, what we showing y'all is, look, we make up this Bible, all right? What is your last name? What is your last name? Yeah. Huh? What's your last name? Washington. That's a strong slave master right there, bro. What's your last name? Let me show you. Remember, keep this point in mind. Whenever we disobeyed our God, he put a curse upon us, right? Meaning what? We call it today generational curses. Give me verse 37. How you doing, brother? We're going over who we truly are as a people. God never called us African Americans. Mr. Washington, Mr. Washington, check this out. Come on, read. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. Hey, my brother, Mr. Washington, right? God said, amongst all the nations, we go by another name. That's right. We become an astonishment. You understand that, right? So, how did you get to the point of your ancestors being called Washington? When they came off the ship. What happened? My brother real quick. My brother real quick. How do we get to that point of being called? What's your last name? Brother Washington. How do we get to that point? Give me Isaiah 60, uh, 65 real quick. What happened in our history? The slave master got you from off that ship and we were labeled his property. You understand that? So now, who did that happen to? Our ancestors, the Israelites. You understand what I'm saying? Right? Here we go. Read that. Come on. Look. What I'm talking about is prophesied in the Bible. Read. Come on. Isaiah 65 and verse 15. And ye shall leave your name for a curse. What did the Bible say? Ye shall leave your name for a curse. Because God never called you Mr. Washington. God called you Israel. And you come from the tribe of Judah, brother. You understand that, right? Guess who else came from your mighty tribe of Judah? Jesus the Christ. Read it our, our Lord and Savior. So what does that mean? Jesus Christ and you, y'all are family, bro. Likewise with all the so-called black Americans and Haitians, all right? They call themselves these names. They are the Israelites according to the Bible. Read them on the top, come on. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. God said you're going to leave your name, my brother. What's your first name? What's your first name? Huh? Quan? Quan Washington, right? Washington was a good slave master. He wasn't good. He was a famous one. That's what I'm trying to say. 
George Washington, right? So if you go back, I'm pretty sure you your ancestor was on that plantation. Because that name didn't come from nowhere but that owner. You understand that, right? They, their so-called first president was a slave owner. And what did they do? They came preaching this right here. You understand that, right? Because Jesus Christ never looked like this. You understand that, right? Okay, so here we go. Read it again on the top. Come on. And ye shall leave your name for a curse. We left our name of being called Israel for a curse name of being called African American, Puerto Rican. Where on Saturday, we watch our women dress like whores in bikinis. We watch our brothers lust after women. We do all these promiscuous things, and brothers, we are the children of God. And we ought to act like it by keeping God's commandments. Give me back that real quick, Deuteronomy. Hey, real, real quick, brother. I know I'm losing you a little bit, but check this out. God made you for a reason, bro. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse uh, 6, real quick. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. You are holy unto him. My brother Washington, what does it mean to be holy? Huh? What is, it? yeah, something like that being saved, right? But how do you become saved? What do you have to do? How do you have to be holy, right? Read this real quick, come on. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art holy people unto the Lord thy God. God said we are holy people. How is it that the only time when we're giving reference is if we're throwing a ball through a hoop on a Phoenix team? How is it that only if we're catching pigskin are we being honored? How is it that if we ain't in a damn dress like Tyler Perry and, and, and P. Diddy or whatever, or rapping about killing each other, or who else? Or Tyrese, right? Why is that the only time when we're referenced? But God said this, read. For thou art holy people unto the Lord thy God. You are holy to God. We don't understand our relationship with God. He has us above everybody on the planet, bro. Right. Ain't nobody like our race of people. Right. And we don't know that. You are his son. Right. Literally, you descend from the creator of all things. Right. We got to get back. Read it the top. Come on. For thou art holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee. God chosen you, your mama, your family, all of them, right? Read on. To be a special people unto himself. Above, what? Above. Is above equal? Yes or no? My brother, to be above, to be above all people, is that you being equal to everybody or different status? What does it mean to be above? Huh? What does it mean to be above what? Above, above? Above all people. Hold on, the Chinese man. Above all people. The Arab man. Above all people. The Caucasian Edomite, read. Above all people. The the the, the African, the real African, not us. We're shamanic. What? Above all people. Is that equality? Why do they promote equality, but they don't treat you equal? Why is it that we had to ask to drink out of the same water fountain? That's not equal. Hey, look, let me ask you something. Give me the sign. Where the hell was John 3.16 when they had us in chains? Answer that question. I thought God so loved the world. I thought this Jesus right here, false Jesus, loved the world. Where was John 3.16 and love thy neighbor as yourself when they put chains on our necks? Ask yourself that. What happened to that? What did the Bible say? Come on. For thou art holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Hey, Brother Quan, real quick. What did God say? He said, what about us as a people? Read it again, above. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. What did God say about you? He, what? That's right. Give the brother a round of applause. He said, God said you are above all people upon the face of the planet. Very good. So but what does that mean? You're not equal to the white man. You're better than the white man. You're more blessed than the white man. Hey, Quan, do you have children? You do? All right. So when your children go off, because you love them above everybody else's children, right? You're responsible for your children. If they do wrong, how do you get them right when they do wrong? What you do? Huh? Tell them what's right, right? You tell them. Sometimes if the words don't work, what do you do? You got to what? Go ahead and say it. You can say it out loud. We men here. What you, how you discipline your kids? 
You pop them, right? What does that pain do? What is it supposed to do? Teach them. So when you discipline them, you love them, right? I'm going to show you guys discipline towards us. Here it is right here. You know what I'm saying? That? Because he loved us above all people. Only we did. Wait, this happened to us. Only the God put us through this right here. Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 24. Check this out. Bro, I'm connecting with you real quick. Check this out. Brother Kwan, check this out real quick, right? This right here is a time period in our history that happened that we must repent from. This right here was a result of us sinning as a people. You understand, Kwan? Here we go. Read. Come on. Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 27. Bring it Therefore, thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies. So because God loved us so much, he delivered us into the hands of our enemies. My brother with the Metallica shirt on. You hear that? What's the race of your forefathers? Right? So-called black man, right? Right? God did this to us because he loved us. Hey, brother Quan, you, you hear that, right? Look, check this out. Come on, read. Therefore, thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemy. God delivered us to the white man. Read it all. Come on. Who vexed them. And, who vexed God. And in the time of their trouble, when they cried unto thee, thou hearkenest, and thou heardest them from heaven. And so, brother, whenever we was in this time period right here, we cried unto God to relieve us of this struggle. You understand what I'm saying? Why? When we sinned against God, he put us in captivity. That's right. This right here happened to our ancestors, and we lost our heritage. You understand that, right? Real quick. Give me this real quick. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, read verse 5 real quick. Do you want to receive hell or heaven? Which one? Heaven, right? So how do you receive salvation, my young friend? Huh? What? No sin. Very good. Give that brother a round of applause. He got some sense. Now... What is sin? Huh? Come here, come here. Because you're not wrong, say it again. What's your name? Chase, right? Chase, I'm Tazan One. How you doing, brother? All right, here we go. So, you mentioned, I mentioned to you, how do you receive salvation, right, brother Chase? You good, bro? You good, right? So, you mentioned not doing bad by God, right? Not sinning, correct? What is sin? We're going to get it. Come on. First John chapter 3 and verse 4. Bring it out. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. What is the definition of sin? Read it. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. You heard it? Whoever, break, whoever sins transgress the what? The law. What is sin? Right. When you go against God's law, that's sin. What that's is one right. of God's laws? Come on, bring it up. Very good. You said tattoos? Here we go. Give me that real quick numbers. Very good, very good. The brother, he cooking, he cooking, he cooking. So, think about if we sin as a people, if we all sin as a people, God's consequence for us sinning is his punishment, which was this. This is one of forms of God's punishment. God's punishment, if a man, or, or two men supposed to sleep with each other? Why does America push that? Huh? That's not equality. That's evil. That's nasty as hell. That's, right. That's gay. It's gay. You understand that? It's sodomy as the Bible calls it. You understand that? Two men are not supposed to sleep with each other. You're not supposed to be uh, getting tattoos. I don't get tattoos no more. You're not supposed to be eating pork. Read this what you got, come on. Leviticus chapter 21 and verse five. They shall not make baldness upon their head. Neither shall they save off the corner of their beard. So you're not supposed to make baldness on your head. Who do you know that's famous they got a bald head nowadays? He threw a ball through the hoop. He won like six championships. Not LeBron. We ain't talking about LeBron. We're talking about Michael Jordan. MJ, right? He got a bald head, right? What did the Bible say? Come on. They shall not make baldness upon the head. Neither shall they take off the corner of their beard. So a man is supposed to have a beard on his face and what else? Come on. Nor make any cuttings in their No what? Nor make any cutting in their flesh. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 27. Yeah. He shall not round the corners of your beard. Neither shall they mar the corners of Ye shall not round the corners of your head, neither shall thou mar the corners of your beard. Ye shall not make any cutting in your flesh for the dead. You're not supposed to make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead like what? 
Sometimes we get crosses for like our parents, right? So you're not supposed to get tattoos. Now, what we talked about earlier was when we sin against God, God gave us a punishment. You're not supposed to sin. All right, you understand that, right? So real quick, go back to that real quick. We talked about salvation. Sin is breaking God's commandments. How do you receive salvation? Matthew 19, verse 16, real quick. Matthew 19, 16. If you want to receive eternal life, you must keep God's commandments. Hear that? This is the opportunity for us as melanated people to come together because they do have a Harley week and then they want to call this Black Bike Week. I didn't know that, but no, I don't figure this is for us. The racism is still here. The racism is still here. It wouldn't be a Harley week and a Black Bike week if it wasn't. See what I'm saying? Man, we at Murder Beach for the Black Beach Biker Weekend, whatever it's called, man. The prophets are here to wake our people up, man. A lot of people, man, it's time to repent and come out this foolishness, man. You got this place swarming with our people. You would, you would think we're gathering together with something good, but it's not. It's filth out here. You even got brothers walking around with their wives half naked. What are we doing? We're out here showing our people there's a better way. There's a better example. This image messed us up. And that's why we are here to show us you what the real image is.